Okay, let's continue with our tour of our phylogenetic tree. We've looked at a number of these basal taxa here, and now we're moving into bilateria. And first we'll be looking at the proteostomes. So within the proteostomes here, we have ectisosomes and lophotrochosomes, and we'll be looking at these six phyla. So first of all, nematodes. Nematodes are one of several different phyla of worms. These are round worms. That's distinct from segmented worms. Here's the goriest example I could come up with for these guys. This is what heartworm looks like in the heart of a dog. So this is why we try to make sure dogs don't get this. So these are worms that actually live inside other organisms. There's a variety of different ecological roles that round worms can play. This is just one example. Anacophrens, or velvet worms, are one of the other ectisosomes. So these guys have chitin in their skin, so they'll crunch if you step on them. Chitin is, that's the hard substance that insects and arthropods have. You can see they're not really like a worm because they got limbs, and they're not really like an arthropod because they don't have a hard shell, but they have chitin, so that's a synapomorphia for them and arthropods. These guys we really aren't that familiar with. They tend to live in the tropics, so they're not really um, that big of an organism for those of us in North America but they are their own phylum as distinct from everything else as arthropods are. Now looking at arthropods, so arthropods are insects, spiders, crustaceans. So the arthropoda phylum has four major subphyla. And again, that's only four out of the original 17 that we're able to identify from the Burgess Shale. So arthropoda includes hexapods, which are mostly insects, but not all Hexapods are insects. All insects are hexapods. Not all hexapods are insects. Myriapods, which are millipedes and centipedes. Crustaceans, which are crabs, lobsters, shrimp, and barnacles. And chelicerates, which are spiders, mites, scorpions, horseshoe crabs, and trilobites. Um, trilobites, at one point in Earth's history, were a very major organism. So you can see a number of examples here. Right? Millipedes can get quite large. Sometimes arthropods can actually kill vertebrates and horseshoe crabs can actually get quite large. If you ever get the chance to go to a beach during horseshoe crab mating season, it's, it's, it's quite the sight. Now, moving down to the lophotrochosomes, we have mollusks, which includes snails, clams, squids, etc. So there are basically two types of mollusks. There are mollusks that have the hard part, the shell on the outside, like snails, chitons, clams, with the soft part on the inside. And then there are other mollusks where the soft part has evolved to become the major portion of the body, and the hard part is reduced to just the beak seen in octopus and squid, and basically nothing seen in nudibranchs. These guys swim around the ocean, they have a variety of different colors and chemical defenses. And the diversity within this phylum is really quite remarkable, right? These things live a lifestyle very different from these things. These things are very different from these things. So there's quite a bit of diversity within mollusca, and you can actually argue about whether you think mollusca are more diverse kind of within their phylum than, say, arthropods are. Annelids are segmented worms, so here's a leech uh, drinking some blood from some guy's arm. Earthworms are also annelids. And then platyhelminthes, or flatworms, or flukes, right, so this is a planaria here, this is a disease-causing fluke here, but there are also a number of marine platyhelminthes that swim around, and in fact can often look a lot like nudibranchs, for example, if you're a marine biologist in some parts of the ocean, sometimes it's actually difficult to even tell what phylum you're looking at when you see something like this swim along. 